So now we're going to look at the case where we have a differential equation in our uh, difference or differential form, and it is not exact. That is, the partial of m with respect to y is not the partial of n with respect to x. In that case, we um, we're going to introduce something that's familiar to us: an integrating factor. The ultimate goal is to make it exact. So if it's not exact, make it. Which we can do um, sometimes. Actually I should probably say um, occasionally we'll be able to find it. Actually, you know, more realistically, it's gonna be if we're lucky. <laughs> to be able to convert a uh, differential equation that's not exact into one that is exact. Let me give you an example of one. Um, uh, in fact, in this example right here, we've got uh, a differential equation in this form right here. I'm going to go and highlight it. This guy right here. You can check right away and see that it is not exact. If I take the derivative of this first term with respect to, say, y, I get a 2. But if I take the derivative of this with respect to y, because it's 4x squared over y, you see right away you're going to end up with uh, a non-constant uh, partial with respect to x. Actually, sorry, sorry, let me correct myself. The partial of this with respect to y was 2. The partial of this with respect to x would involve a 3 and an 8xy to the minus 1. Clearly not exact. Okay. Now, we want to verify that it is exact if we multiply by this integrating factor right here. That is, take this term and let's multiply it in here, here, and of course here, and see what we get. So mu m dx plus mu n dy okay, would be, you take an x y squared times 2y minus 6x dx plus an x y squared times a 3x minus 4 x squared y to the minus 1 dy and of course we're going to have this equal to 0 from, from here. Now multiplying this in I end up with 2 x y cubed minus 6 x squared y squared dx plus multiplying this in I get a 3 x squared y squared and then x y squared times 4 x squared y to the minus 1 is a minus 4 I now I have an x cubed and then y squared times y to the minus 1 is just y dy equal 0 now let's show that this is exact so if this term right here is my m then m sub x, sorry, m sub y is 6x y squared minus, and then take the derivative of this with respect to y, the 2 out front multiplied by the 6 gives me 12x squared y. And then if I let this over here be my n, my new n, I should say, then n sub x would be equal to a uh, 6xy squared minus a 12x squared y. And of course you see that these two, this here and this here, are equal, okay, which implies m sub x equals n, sorry, m sub y equals n sub x, which means that it's exact. Now, after we've multiplied in this uh, mu, this integrating factor. So of course the obvious question is where in the world did I get that mu? So how do we find the mu of x, the mu of or sorry, the mu of xy? And the answer is sometimes you get lucky, but I got a couple of cases here where you can um, explicitly find it under certain circumstances. 
Now, what I want you to think about is this guy right here, um, this expression, which let me rewrite for you in our subscript notation just so it may be a little bit easier to make out. This is m sub y minus n sub x divided by the function n. If you evaluate this expression, that is, find the value of the partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x, and divide that by the original n function, if that turns out to be continuous and depends only on x, then you can use this as your integrating factor. Now, what is this integrating factor? And I'm going to rewrite it out a little bit easier to see. It's e to the integral of this guy, dx, namely m sub y minus n sub x over n dx. And similarly, if that's not true, if that doesn't depend only on x, then you can check this guy, right, which is the same thing as n sub x minus m sub y divided by m. Notice it's the same terms on the numerator, it's just um, inverted, meaning you uh, switch the order. Uh, m, n sub x minus m sub y, which be, by the way, these are two things that you would have to check anyways to determine whether or not something is exact. So you've already calculated these in a general problem, but you're going to subtract them and divide by the original m function. If that depends only on y, then you can use, and this is saying e to the integral of n sub x minus m sub y all divided by m and dy. Now you're integrating with respect to y because it depends only on y. Same thing up here. You're integrating with respect to x because it depends only on x. So when it's not exact, you can check these two quantities and see if they happen to depend only on one of the variables. If if my minus nx over n depends only on x, or if nx minus my depends over m depends only on y, then you've got a formula for a um, an integrating factor. You multiply it in, it will become exact. You can then solve the differential equation. Uh, now, the proof of that, it's rather tedious. I'm going to omit it, but you'll see in the example that follows that that does in fact work. All right, so in this example, we see that um, m and n, if I do m sub y, I get 1. And if I do n sub x, I get uh, 2xy minus 1, okay, which means not exact. So we need to find an integrating factor that might work. So let's consider the first one of my examples. Let's try m sub y minus m, sorry, n sub x divided by n. So this would be 1 minus the 2xy minus 1. Notice how these come into play right here all divided by the original function in x squared y minus x. Okay, just see where all these come from. This here went right here. This here went right here. And then of course here's the original n here down below. Now, uh, let's simplify this a little bit. We end up with uh, 2 minus 2xy, which I can factor out. Um, in fact, I'm going to factor out, well, well, we'll see what we get on bottom. On bottom, factor out an x, and I get to xy minus 1. And notice if on top I factor out a minus 2, that is, I'm just going to rewrite this as minus 2xy plus 2. If I factor out the minus 2, I get an xy minus 1 which cancels with my xy minus 1 on bottom. This cancels with this, and I end up with a negative 2 divided by x. Notice how this now depends only on x. So I'm going to use my integrating factor mu xy to be equal to e to the integral of m sub y 
minus n sub x divided by n dx. And of course, this right here is this expression here. So that becomes e to the integral of negative 2 over x dx, which is equal to e to the negative 2 natural log of x, which is e to the natural log of x to the minus 2, or x to the minus 2. So here, all the way over here, is my mu. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite you know, mu m dx plus mu n dy equals 0. That is, multiply the original differential equation by mu. So I have an x to the minus 2 times 2x squared plus y dx plus an x to the minus 2x squared y minus x dy equals 0. So just multiplied everything in my original difference equation by x to the minus 2. Multiply that in, I get 2 plus x to the minus 2y dx plus y minus x to the minus 1 dy. Just distributing this to each term. And that's what we end up with. x to the minus 2 times x gives me x to the minus 1. Perfect. Equals 0. Now the question is, is this now exact? Assuming my theorem, which I omitted to prove for, is in fact valid, this should now be an exact equation. So let's now refer to these new functions here as our new m. Just keeping in mind that from this point forward, I'm using m and n to represent these guys just to follow the um, techniques for solving an exact equation. What is m sub y now? The new m. It would be this with respect to y, which is x to the minus 2, and it's positive. And n sub x would be, you take the minus 1, multiply it out front, so you get positive x, reduce this power by 1, so it's x to the minus 2, and notice these are, in fact, exact. So we now have everything we need to solve this differential equation. This one right here we can now solve using our strategy as before. Um, now, I've got to either integrate this with respect to x or this with respect to y. The easier one for me, actually, they're both very easy, so I'm going to integrate um, the first one. I'm going to do it the standard way of doing m first. So f of x, y would be the integral of 2 plus x to the minus 2y dx plus a function of only y, which gives me 2x minus x to the minus 1 plus g of y. All right, and uh, that's my f of x, y. So now I'm going to take f sub y and set that equal to m, in. Okay, integral of m up. All right, so partial with respect to y, and I left off this y right here, so that's the key is a now a negative x to the minus 1 y. Nope, not y, because I'm taking the derivative with respect to y. So plus g prime of y. Make sure that looks like a y to you. OK? Now, this we're going to set equal to n, the new n, which is y minus x to the minus 1, which means that g prime has to be y. So g is the integral of y, right? Integrate both sides here. You get a 1 half y squared. And I'm leaving out the arbitrary constant because it comes into play whenever we write our final solution. On the right-hand side, we have a constant. So plug this now back into here, and you've got um, our solution, remember, look like f of x, y equals a constant. So we have 2x minus, and I'm just going to write this as y over x, plus 1 half y squared equals a constant. 
And since that's quadratic in y, it's neater to just leave it in implicit form. There's your final solution. Okay, whole key there, finding the integrating factor whenever you can. All right, there's a good example for you to work through. You'll have a couple of those on homework and on your review for your exam, and of course on your exam next week. Thanks.